uh, kind of been going over the essentials and kind of the basics and the fundamentals and all that, and I'm continuing on the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and it's just one of those where Jesus kind of goes into it with the Beatitudes and he gives us hope. He says, there's hope for all of us. There's a category for all these things that we would think weren't a strength or a positive. But in the eyes of the Lord, they are. And then he turns to us and lets us know kind of our obligation of being the light on the hill, the salt of the earth, to where we have a job to do. We have an obligation in this, in these blessings that we're receiving from God. And he kind of lays out with the fulfillment of the law, his purpose, why he's here, what he's going to do, what's going to transpire, and what's going to change. And then he kind of lays out some of the rules that we've been following, and the Jewish culture have been following their whole lives, and that we are to follow, but more deeper in our hearts, preparing our hearts for the Holy Spirit, in the sense of where we may be doing these things, and we may be following these laws, but when the Holy Spirit's going to come into our heart, we need to prepare for that at a deeper level of where our heart and our caring is going to be. And so we continue on to that as we get into Matthew 6. Um, and he's talking about giving to the needy. And as we get into this time of the year, a lot of our hearts, we get into that, that giving to where we get the Holy Spirit and all pours on our hearts and we feel that we need to give more because we count our blessings and we do that. And to where even in that, he's saying there's deeper, that your heart has to be prepared for a deeper giving versus what the Jewish culture and a lot of people do in the purpose of their giving and how they do it. And so if we start there, it says, be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men, to see them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues, and on the streets, to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that way your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So we've all done that, I imagine, to where we want to feel that, to where, you know, when you go into Christmas or birthday or giving a gift, you get that tag, right? And you make sure your name is on that tag when you give it or put it in the pile. Because it's a great gift. And you got the greatest gift you're ever gonna that person's ever gonna get. So you want to make sure your name is on there. And when they open it, you want them to know, hey, this one's from me to you. It's great. <laughs> and to where you can feel that. Get that expression and you feel it where everybody else is around is like, oh my gosh, that's the greatest gift. Who got that for him? And you feel lifted up and you feel that great, just that praise from everybody in the room and everybody around you. But what God's saying, well, on the other hand, people we'll look at it. You've had that gift where you're like, last minute, stop at the grocery store or at the gas station. You're like, I don't know, there's some Tic Tacs. And you throw it in and you don't put your name on it. Because you don't want them to know that was from you. So where God's saying the opposite, in a sense, is those great gifts, don't put your name on it. Let that person feel that. Let everybody look around and say, oh my gosh, that was a great gift. Oh my goodness, that was great. And let God's reward of that giving be in your heart. Not of the people in the room. Not of man. Not of the world. So when we, when we give, and we do those things, it's out of our heart and out of our love. That same heart and that same love that he's preparing us with in these other, you know, on the Sermon of the Mount as he goes through that, as he prepares us for the Holy Spirit. He's saying, don't do it for that glory. 
Don't do it for the praise. Do it because of your heart, because God, because of your love, because of Christ. The Holy Spirit in your heart wants you to. And do it in silence, do it in secret. So and you'll see a common, common theme as we go through 6, um, Matthew 6 in there. And that's kind of the common theme is that the praise of man versus the praise and glory of God. And what are we doing our things for? What are we doing this for? Are we doing it so man can glorify us? Are we doing it so God gets glorified? And we do it in silence so that way God is the one getting the glory. And so we'll go in on prayer. This is one of my favorite ones on here. Um, in Matthew on the Servant of the Mount is about prayer. Because I think it really turns to... Of the personalness that Christ is leading us towards in that relationship with God through the Holy Spirit and to prepare our hearts to be able to receive that. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. And so if you notice, he likes that word hypocrites and he uses it for a lot of the Jewish leaders because that's what they have become and that's how they've been. And we can look in our society today and that's a nice thing about this is we can look at this, and it can be relevant right now. And we look at those churches, and we can see them not to point fingers or anything, but they're, they're out there, you know, to where they're doing the things for glory of man, not of God, and they become hypocrites. And a lot of the Christian culture has gotten a bad name because of that, and to where they look at it, well, you guys are just a bunch of hypocrites, it's not from your heart and the love of God that you're doing your things. And I think that's why we need to be constantly reminded, constantly learning of that, is that it's in our heart and of our heart, not the glory of man and the world. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. And I tell you the truth, you have received, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for the Father knows what you need before you ask Him. I know that I've been this way in prayer in my life and even before my Christian walk, you know, I think uh, I've told you before, I was seven when I belly crawled out the back door and that was the last Sunday that I had to go to church as a kid. Because, but I still pray. Right? I still have that prayer. God, if you do this for me, I won't do this anymore. <laughs> or, please God, please God, just give me this. God, just give me this God. Just this one time. Just this one time. God, please God. God, please, please, please thinking the more or the bigger the sacrifice that he's going to hear, hear my prayer and answer my prayer. But what Jesus is saying is that God already knows. He already knows what's on your heart. He already knows what you're going to pray. He already knows what you need and what you're going to get. So in that, he says, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. So in that, then we start off and it's a personal, right? He says, go don't do it out, you know, in front of everybody. Don't make a big display of it. And look at me, I'm praying and making it this big display. Go, have that personal relationship with God, the Father. Turn to Him personally. And that's how He's preparing our hearts for the Holy Spirit in that relationship in prayer. And he lets us know that his kingdom come and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
So that's a connection. It's not just about when I die and go to heaven and these things that I'm doing in my life is so that way I can get to heaven and everything that's going to be is for heaven. But it's also for my life now. It's also for where I walk and where I am in this life and the things that he's going to give me and the blessings that he's going to give me isn't just after I die. But it's also why I'm here. While I'm on earth, these things are the same that he wants to give us. He wants to give us that same love, that same glory, those same blessings as he would in heaven here. Give us our daily bread. So, what we need. Basically, what we're asking for, as you will know from Psalms 23, is do not want, because God's got us. So we just give us what we need to survive. That's all I'm asking. Forgive us our debts. And here's where it comes into you and where we're asked to do something and ask on our hearts again, preparing ourselves for the Holy Spirit and being able to receive that message and receive God's love and have that personal relationship is as we have forgiven our debtors. And that goes back to knowing God's grace and sharing God's grace. Like, He's forgiven us of our worst day. It's up to us to forgive others on their worst day and the days that they've crossed us. Lead us not into temptation. So we know, and again, we go back to Psalms 23, we want to be lead led in the path of righteousness for his same sake. But we want to be led away from these things and that is also something in our hearts that we have to look into and it's kind of ironic that what he goes in, well, I shouldn't say ironic because Jesus kind of knows what he's talking about and what he goes into next, he kind of follows a pattern. But, and then, but deliver us from the evil one. And I think we all want that. Deep down in our hearts, deep down in our lives, we may not see it, we may not interact with it, we may not be involved in it, but when it comes down to it, we don't want anything to do with the evil one. We don't want anything to do with evil. We don't want evil in our lives. And that's our prayer. That's our personal prayer to God by ourselves, one in one relationship with Him as we open our hearts to the Holy Spirit to let God in to where that way we know and we can feel and we know that He's there when we're praying. It's not about asking what we need and where to go and what He can get for us and this and that. He already knows what we need. He's already going to give us what we need. He just wants you to turn to Him personally and have that conversation and open up that door and open up your heart to Him. And then Jesus does one of these things where all of a sudden it's about prayer and then He changes gear and says, Oh, by the way, or if you forgive men when they sin against you, you have... Uh, Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So we go into prayer and he says, this is how you pray. This is what you want to do. You want to make it personal. You want to bring it in the heart. He throws a little bit about forgiving your debtors and God forgives you. And that's really the only part in there where Jesus says in your prayers, you have a job to do. And that's to forgive everybody that's sinned against you and is against you. And then again, he reminds us that if you forgive them, God will forgive you. But if you don't forgive them, you're not going to know what God's forgiveness is. And I like to look at it because I'm dyslexic, the opposite way too is you know God's forgiveness, so then you know how to forgive. Mm -hmm. You know, to where those are important. And so then I'll go into the next part where I was saying, you know, Jesus kind of knows what he's doing, and when he speaks, he kind of goes into that. I don't know if you've watched many comedians in your life, but a comedian will set up a joke at the beginning of the set, 
and then kind of go through and then at the end of it wrap it around into this big joke where everybody starts laughing but it started at the beginning Jesus kind of the same way in his teaching is that he gives us these little nuggets and then he wraps it around and gives this big message this big aha moment and so we keep getting that so he starts talking about fasting and so we don't want to be led into temptation. We want to be forgiven. We want our daily bread, right? So not many of us, I don't know, and if you are fasting, you're doing it correctly because I don't know about it and I don't think anybody in the church knows about it because you're not making a big production about it and that's what Jesus is saying not to do. But if you were to fast in the nature of the Jewish culture fasting, I would say that you would want to find somebody that is educated on fasting. And they have a knowledge of what it means to fast and how to fast properly and not just to take it on your own because there's things that may transpire that you don't understand and it may make it where you think fasting is a bad thing. It's also like when they talk about speaking in tongues, that you have to have an interpreter. Because if someone was just randomly up here speaking in tongues, and there wasn't someone to explain, a lot of people would be like, uh, that church is weird, and I'm not going there. <laughs> right? Same thing with fasting, is that it is one of those things, and it is a tool to use, and it will help you with prayer, It'll help you with spirituality, and it'll help you with those things. But like I said, make sure you have a mentor that has an education in fasting before you do that. But on another turn, there are things that we do in our lives that we can do to take away in the sense of like, I'm not going to watch TV for a week because I think I want to grow closer to God, so I'm going to sacrifice TV and read the Bible, mm -hmm. right? To where we still can do these things, and it's kind of that elimination to grow closer to God, or to bring yourself closer to God, or to even test your limits. Uh, know how you can say it's temptation. I did a 90-day took sugar out of my life for 90 days. Struggle. <laughs> if you want to know what sugar's in, just go to the grocery store, because pretty much everything <laughs> has sugar in it. Into where, now I look back at that, and I did 90 days, and until I don't, I eat sugar now. <laughs> it's not something that's stuck. But within me, I know that I have the strength to not do that, right? To where that's one of those tools that you can also use it as, as a personal strength to where I fasted for a week or I did without this for a week so I know that I could have the personal strength not to do this sin that's in my life or this thing that keeps coming up when I'm with my friends. Because if I have the strength to resist that, I can resist them. So it also can be used in a tool that way. And so, what Christ says about that is when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. There's that word again, hypocrites. So, one of the things that we know that we don't want to be is a hypocrite, right? <laughs> so we want to stand by, you know, he said it previously, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Don't be a hypocrite. And I think that's where we get the black eye or we give ourselves the black eyes because we become hypocrites, and Jesus forgives us for that because that's why he's here. But for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, you have received your, their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it, way, that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only your father. Who is unseen in, and your father who sees what you've done in secret will reward you. So if you're living your life to show other men and women in the world how good you are and how great of a Christian you are, 
That's the reward you're going to get. Is that glorification for man, that pat on the back, that good job, that feeling that you get when everybody around you says good job. But if you take these things in your heart, and you do them for God and for the glory of God and not announcing them and do them for that personal reason so you can grow closer to God and have that relationship. He knows. And you don't need that glory from man because he will reward you. And you will have that glory. And you'll have those blessings. And you'll know his love. And all the other stuff will just fall into place. But if you're going to announce it and do it for the reason so that everybody knows how great you are and how awesome you are to glorify yourself and not give God the credit, then that's all you're going to get. And to where if you look at that same of those three passages that you look through and they break it down as giving to the needy, prayer, and fasting. One common denominator is if you're going to do it for man and if you're going to do it for the world, that's your gift. That's what you're going to get. If you're going to look in your heart and truly do it out of the love and the blessings and what God is giving you, not because you feel obligated, not because you feel guilty, but because you truly feel God's love in your heart and want to express it in that manner. What does it say? Your father, oh, where did he go? Your father will see what's done in secret and he will reward you. Mm -hmm. And I know there's that fine line. We live our lives and then we walk that fine line between the world and God, and godliness, and Christianity, and, and it's not this clear message, you know, because if it was, there'd be one page on here that said, God is good, do good. Amen. <laughs> right? And then, it would be you like, whoa, that was easy, I can do that. The word we call the Bible would be called the page. <laughs> the page. Into where... Again, and I don't have time to get to it, and I know I wouldn't, but um, when you look at the whole of it, and you go into where the next one is the treasures in heaven, and we'll get into that next time, but I just want to read, it says, you not, cannot serve God and money. Right. You know, and to where we look at it, and that's a tough one because we have to have money to live. But is that where our life is? Is that what's controlling us? Is that what's running us? Is that what's giving us the glory? That's what's making, motivating us? Or do we take the opposite and we use God's glory and God's, and even though we're in a place where we have to make money, we're still doing God's work. And it doesn't have to be announced. You don't have to be like, you know, hey, well, I'm a Christian, so come on in. We're going to save you, and we're going to do these things. Look, look, everybody, look, I'm saving this guy. I'm praying for him because he's a sinner, and we're going to save him. Everybody, come look at me because I'm doing this for this guy. I'm doing this. You don't need to do that. God knows what's on your heart. He knows the scenario. And bring that person in and pray for them and give them God and give them Christ and just give them the Holy Spirit. That's why God gives us the Holy Spirit, why he gives us that relationship so that way we can be filled up with it and we can give it away. Everybody that we meet, everybody that we see in our lives. But we're not doing it for man. We're not doing it for the people that are around us to make ourselves lifted up and feel better about ourselves. We're doing it to glorify God and lift God up. And when we do these things, if we do them in our, our closets and in secret and we give generously without making a production about it, 
And nobody sees it, and nobody knows about it, and nobody knows anything that you're doing, and you're making this huge difference on the world without any production or any announcement. And you're changing the world one heart at a time in secret. God knows. And He'll reward you in that knowledge. And always give Him the glory, and give Him the love, and express your love, and fill His love, and open your heart. We pray with you. Lord, just thank you. Thank you for creating a way, for tearing that veil through your Son, sacrifice on the cross, that we have a path to you, that we have a way to know you and have you in our lives and feel you in our hearts blessed by the Holy Spirit and know that love so we can share that love and give you that glory not ourselves we are truly blessed in each and every day Jesus name, Amen, Amen.